Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I am your host, Christopher Brown. This is our first installment of our three-part series dedicated to shedding light on the evolving landscape of victim service units in the province of Alberta. Now, in today's episode, we embark on a comprehensive exploration of the crucial role played by victim service units and delve into the transformative changes unfolding throughout the province in 2024. In our exclusive interview with Romesh Persuade, the chairman of the now defunct Camrose and District Victim Service Society, we gained valuable insight into the fundamental aspects of victim service units. Now, the winds of change are sweeping through Alberta's victim service landscape as nearly 60 victim service units are being amalgamated into four regional hubs this year. The restructuring marks a significant shift in the way victim services are administered and aims to enhance efficiency, coordination, and overall effectiveness according to the province. Now, as we sit down with Romesh, we aim to unravel the implications of this restructuring, exploring how it impacts the delivery of victim services across the province. We will also discuss his opinion for the motivations behind these changes and the anticipated downfalls for both service providers and individuals seeking support. Furthermore, we delve into Romesh's experiences, uncovering what information has been communicated from the province to the Victim Services Unit boards. So join us in this insightful journey as we navigate the intricate world of Alberta Victim Services Units. In subsequent parts of this series, we'll be continuing to explore the nuances of the transition, shedding light on the regional hubs, the perspectives from service providers and municipal leaders, including a show also dedicated to the province's response. Stay tuned for a comprehensive analysis of the evolving landscape of victim services in Alberta over the next couple of weeks. This is Municipal Affairs. Ramesh, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start with a general question, because I think you are the best person to be able to answer this question. In the province of Alberta, what is a victim services unit? Well, the, a unit that uh, supports uh, both uh, victims of crime, victims of tragedy uh, in the province of Alberta. It's funded uh, not by taxpayers' money, but uh, um, victims, um, and I'm going to get this, this name wrong, wrong but uh, the, through victim surcharge, if you're convicted of an offense, uh, there's a surcharge that's, uh, that's put on your conviction. Um, even from traffic tickets, and that goes into a fund which is um, amounted to a millions and millions of dollars. Um, and there's a, a bill, the Victims of um, Crimes Act, I believe it's called, that those those funds are to be uh, used to support um, victims of crime and tragedy in the province and set up the foundation uh, in all communities throughout Alberta to support uh, folks that um, have have gone through some kind of tragedy, whether criminal activity, uh, trauma, um, suicide of, of a loved one, um, those kind of things. So how did you get involved with a victim services unit? So that way my uh, listeners and my uh, viewers can get a better understanding of how you fit into our conversation today about the changes that the province has implemented into going from regional services boards to a, uh, sorry, victim services board to a regional services uh, uh, sort of model. How do you fit into this discussion that we're having today? Well, it's, it's a real funny, funny story in that uh, my career uh, started in, uh, I came from Toronto in 1979. The Alberta government was hiring um, and I got hired by uh, Alberta Correctional Services. So I was on the side of uh, keeping those that were incarcerated on remand. Um, in check, I worked my way up through that system um, and retired in 2017 after 39 plus years with the government of Alberta as uh, the director of the uh, new Edmonton Remand Center. 
after a, a few years of uh, thinking, okay, well, should I have retired? Um, keep my hand, my head busy, I should say. Keep my hands in something. Um, it uh, an ad came out in Camrose. We live in in the Hay Lakes area, um, just outside of Edmonton, uh, close to Camrose. And an ad came out for Camrose and District Victim Services Society looking for board members. And I thought, what an opportunity that would be. Uh, I've got the criminal justice background. I've got a few degrees that the, the government uh, helped me attain over and above my, uh, my degree in Ontario. Um, and I thought it would be a very great way to give back to our local community to ensure that um, our clients, um, although we don't want a lot of clients as victims of crime and strategy, but they are there and to help support them and make sure that the, the, uh, the right tools were in place to support the running of the unit. And that's how I got involved in the, on the board. I applied for a position, uh, was successful in that application. Um, soon after that, uh, the chair stepped down for personal reasons. And uh, I was asked to, to step up as the chair of uh, Camrose and District Victim Services Society, um, which I served until, um, well, we're, the society still exists. Uh, our contract uh, with the government of Alberta um, was terminated as of uh, October 31st, 2023. So that's so, basically my background. And I appreciate that. So. I want to get to the change now, because I think this is the big crux of what I heard at the uh, fall 2023 RMA convention at the Alberta Municipalities Convention. The topic of Alberta, sir, uh, the victim services units uh, and the province's changes that they were in, they introduced earlier in, if I'm not mistaken, and correct me if I'm wrong here, earlier in the year or even before that, for what I understand in 2022, um, they are moving to a more regional approach. And this is causing some concerns in the already established, and I'm paraphrasing from what I understand, already established victim services units. Is that a misunderstanding of what I'm hearing uh, from municipal leaders from across Alberta who have these victim services units sort of in place? No, you're entirely right. Um, I think I, I'm just looking at some of my notes I've made here for myself. So if I glance away, I apologize. No but, worries. Um, the, the the zonal approach, according to uh, to the government, um, will promote a standard, to use their words, standardized, financially sustainable, and professional level of service to victims of crime and trauma throughout the province of Alberta. Um, I'm not sure that we haven't been providing that that exact. Um, that exact uh, level of service. I think we have been providing it. Um, the other part of it is how are you gonna manage from going from 62, 63, I think, um, communities that had victim services unit to a four zone model. Um, the, the information that we have gotten back from the government of Alberta, GOA, um, is one, why is a change necessary? Um, and two, how are you gonna affect this change? They haven't been very open in communication um, with any of us, to my understanding, uh, me in particular, uh, or our area, um, in how this is gonna work. We met with uh, the director of victim services, um, from the representative from the government of Alberta in June, July, June or July of this year, 2023, um, tried to get some answers to, uh, to that question. You know, how are we going to move forward? How are we going to maintain the local um, hands-on approach given that you're saying, okay, we're going to a zonal model um, 
we're going to be based, uh, I believe, uh, our zone will be based out of the Leduc. Um, so how will the local community touch still be maintained given that you've you've moved away kind of thing um the response was very painted a rosy picture didn't really answer the question um next thing we knew uh september 25th i believe um we got notice that cameras and um district uh, um Victim Services Society, uh, the contract with the government was being terminated um, with 30 days notice. Well, they gave us 40 days notice. I'm, I'm, um, I'm sorry. And I have, to, so I, have not to, sure. I have to ask this question because you just leveled an accusation there. I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. Are you saying that because you raised concerns, you asked for clarification, your contract got terminated? Or am I hearing that incorrect here? No, that is my opinion. Um, and prior to that, we've been in touch and have asked um, the government of Alberta, the Public Safety Department, um, for more conversation um, as a group in Alberta. They denied that. They said each individual society can meet with uh, the director of victim services um, individually. Um, that's what we did. But I feel... I've been asking pertinent questions as to how is this going to work? How is this going to move forward? Who is um, doing the hiring of the, the new boards? Um, questions like that. And I've been getting mixed messages um, from that department. And I believe, I truly believe that because I've been proactive to ensure that not only our area, cameras and, and district is going to be uh, protected moving forward under this system. But we, we want to put some input. We want to have some input and to say, well, have you thought about this? Have you thought about, um, you know, how, how are you going to have somebody locally to look after this area? And we've, we've gotten very few responses, positive responses as just a general, um, almost flowery answer that it's going to be looked after. We're going to look after it and it'll, it'll move on. And I believe, I truly believe that because I've been so um, holding them accountable, them being the government of Alberta, Public Safety Department, that uh, they just said, okay, you know what? We're done. Um, their contract is done as of October 31st. Okay. So I have a few things that I want to sort of pick up on there, if that's okay, because I want to sort of make sure I'm understanding this because if I understand it, I think my listeners and my audience members will understand this as well. So I want to start by talking about October 31st first. October 31st, your contract, the Camrose Victim Services contract ends. So there is no victim services unit in the uh, area of cameras right now as we speak, correct? Or am I misunderstanding that? No, no. I should have um, uh, explained a little bit further that uh, prior to that, much prior to that, cameras police service came to our board and said that they have been contacted by the government and asked to put a business plan forward if they wish to take over uh, the running of victim services in the city of Camrose. Um, they shared, they were very open with us, Camrose Police Service, and shared that business plan. And I actually said to the inspector, I said, that on behalf of the board, um, we think it's a smart thing to do to protect the city of Camrose. And we'll see what happens with, with the, uh, the rural part of it. Uh, rural cameras and how that's going to work. So they did, they got notice, I believe, the day before us that they were moving forward with their business plan and they were scrambling to, uh, to hire a uh, manager to look after that, that area. Funny enough, they hired um, the person that was our program manager 
and she is now running um, the Camrose Police Department Victim Services Unit. Now, part of that um, contract with the government was the assurance that they would also look after rural cameras until this, this new zonal model came into effect, which is now looking at September 2024. Okay, so I appreciate your clarification on that part. So I want to talk now because I'm just try- I'm trying to lay the groundwork here because I want to make sure I understand this correctly. I want to know what is your biggest concern about the proposed changes? And I say proposed changes because they have not been implemented yet. They are still coming uh, They are, As you've just said, they are coming by 2024 in September. So we still got about nine months away from recording this episode. What is the biggest concern that you as the former chair of the cameras, victim services has have about the proposed government changes that the province has introduced? Well, I think one of the one of my first concerns is how is this going to be managed? Is it not going to be difficult to manage uh, four regions as opposed to you had 60, 62, 63, I think, communities, different victim services unit. Uh, um, and they're all going to be absorbed, absorbed into four zones. Um, and It's almost a one size fits all. Uh, Again, I'm I'm just referring to some of my notes here that I I can't. Go for it. (laughs) um, A one one size fits all approach, um, which I think is a a total mistake. Um, One one example that I can give, which pops out in my head, is um, the the Banff Canmore area. Now a lot of a lot of those that area, Banff in particular, uh, the victims of crime and tragedy, um, are a lot of um, people that do not live in the area. Um, they're visiting from out of town, so there they have to be a specific uh, mindset and training to be able to deal with those people. How is that going to How is that going to work? And I'm not. I guess I'm not saying that. The, the four zone model um, will never work, but the information that's coming from uh, the government of Alberta at this present time has no explanation as to how. It's just, we're gonna do it and you'll see it'll work. It's, it's very, the communication or lack of communication um, between that department um, and the province, the provincial uh, victim services unit, as they set up right now, is uh, is very much lacking. You know, they're talking about um, financial uh, sustainability. Well, the financial st- sustainability was there. The money is there. There's a surplus in. Um, I, I thought I had it written down here as to how many millions of dollars surplus is in the victims of crime fund. Um, so they say they've got the money to to run this, but if you had the money to run it, why did you not have the money to help the units sustain as as those units and keep things local, keep keep hands on where um, neighbors knew or you know people knew their neighbors. Uh, they they had that um, cohesive touch already as as opposed. Say I'm in I'm in Hay Lakes and and something happens in our area. We've got somebody coming out of Leduc who doesn't even know where um, the village of Hay Lakes is. Much less, well, we're just north of the we're just north about a mile north of the village. Well, what the heck does that mean? Somebody coming out of our unit right now, as it was set up, would know exactly what you're talking about. So a big part of that is how are they going to deal with those issues? You you talk about the communication aspect a lot in the la- in the last like ten minutes of our conversation so far. Who in the government of Alberta have you spoken with? Who what communication channels had were open to you prior to October thirty first 
that you were able to talk to? Was it the minister? Was there a director? I just want to know, like, because I'm just being blunt here for those who are listening and watching this right now. Um, I have tried to do my research to try and get someone from the government of Alberta to come on the show to talk about this issue, to talk about some of the things that I, I have we <laughs> have heard concerns about. And as of right now, they have been falling on deaf ears. Hopefully in the ne- new year, we will hear something and we'll have someone come on and talk about this. But for you, for someone who was actively involved, who were you talking to and what did they sort of, was it just a brush off? And are you hearing that same brush off from other organizations, similar victim service unit boards across Alberta? Yes, I did. I did uh, have a conversation with the the director of victim services. um, And uh, I felt I felt that that was um, was on on deaf ears. Uh, at the time, I tried to research as to find, um, given my past history with this department, I knew I know the level of the rank level. Um, tried to go to the executive director. Um, didn't uh, couldn't even find out who that was. They were kind of uh, in limbo. I think they were making some changes. Eventually. Um, after quite a bit of uh, uh, searching and sending out some emails, um, I did um, chat with the uh, acting executive director. Um, was he exec- No, he was the act- acting assistant deputy minister. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Too many acronyms in this government. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to keep the titles titles straight. Um, and and even. We even wrote, when I say we, on behalf of uh, our board and cameras, we wrote uh, the minister and asked for his, uh, his input. And we were told, well, you deal with the director and only the director. And funny enough, the termination of the contract, which uh, in retrospect, I now find very, very strange, um, was signed by the director of victim services and not on behalf of the minister. Uh, So here was the director of victim services making decisions um, in a contract between the government of Alberta and Camrose and District Victim Services Society. In my past role as director of Remand Center, there's no way that I could ever sign and terminate or agree to a contract with an outside agency um, unless it was on behalf of the minister which who represents the government okay um a that's shocking that's that Again, I didn't see this contract, so I, I have no reason to. I have no reason to believe that you didn't. If this isn't true, but that's a big thing to say. There, are you leveling this not against the the minister, but are you leveling this against the person who is the acting director of the or the director of the victim services within the province? Well, he, that person wrote or that person signed signed the okay. uh, the termination. Yeah. Um, but I guess to answer your question, sorry, kind of deviated there. Um, it seemed like no matter who uh, I was in contact with for further discussion, um, the the result came back, deal with the director of victim services. Okay. That's the one and only person you can deal with. Well, that's the person I had a bit of concern with in that they weren't open to positive communication. In my mind, um, some constructive criticism, I thought, questions asked about where we're going forward. Um, so if if you can't deal with that person, try to go the next person in line that's above them. And every, every person, including the minister, uh, said, no, you only deal with that one person the director of victim services. I, I appreciate your honesty there, Ramesh. And I want to, I want to turn back to the changes here for a few minutes because I am cautious of time and I want to get in as much as I possibly can in our time that we have together. So in your opinion, and I think you've discussed this a little bit already uh, as our co- conversation has gone on, but I want you to go a little bit further. 
how will the change impact the relationships? And this is the this is the key word here: the relationship between victim services, if it goes to this regional model, and the local community. You talk about someone in Leduc not knowing where Hay River is or Hay Lake is, lakes is sorry, or um, not knowing exactly who these people are who are needing these uh, types of services uh, in maintaining. So, how do you see? what challenges lay ahead in maintaining the trust and rapport with victims under the proposed new structure that the province is going to be introducing in 2024? Well, I, I think right now we have some, uh, some unique um, community uh, involvement. And I think this, this structure will erode uh, that that service delivery model that we currently have um, and that it will be um, almost a, a cookie style um, culture that they'll, they'll put in the program that they'll put into place. And one style doesn't meet every place depending on where you are. Uh, I think people that live in the communities and that are volunteers with us, um, volunteer advocates, um, they know their neighbors, they know their requirements. Um, if you change it to a more a regional style model, um, I think you lose that touch. You lose the community touch. Uh, they know what is available, um, whether it be in the, in the city of Camrose or, you know, we don't have that in the city of Camrose, but uh, we can reach out to uh, Sherwood Park because I've got a contact there. Um, I think that is a is a big thing that we would we would lose in in a zonal model, and and it 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 kind of confuses me when the government right now in other areas AHS is a good example. Um, and I think the premier has stated that these zonal models are not working, um, and they're going away from that, and yet here. They're pushing forward hard to say, yep, we're doing it, um, but we're not sharing much information about how we're doing it and who we're doing it with. Do you see any particular demographic group being more vulnerable to these changes than other demographic groups? Do you believe that there might be disproportionately affected by the changes that the government is introducing? Well, um, I think I think there 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 will be uh, the 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 local the local folks. I mean, we service and help with with Tasquin as an example. Um, going forward, how is somebody from from Leduc going to be coming out to to help with a specific um, issue that with Tasquin with Tasquin's got terrible um, homeless situation right now. There's uh, some infighting as to to um, where the shelters are gonna be. Uh, there, you know, that, that whole uh, um, thing that's happening there. We are, our area, Camrose uh, County, uh, rurally knows what, what's happening in there um, and can assist and help, and we have in the past. Um, in this in this new zonal model, we've asked that question. And again, if they've got an answer, if the government's got an answer on how things are going to move forward, they haven't they haven't shared that with us. They haven't said anything. It's just it's going to happen. Uh, these boards are hired already. Um, apparently, they've hired uh, five members of a ten member board. Um, I asked the question again: When will we know who our board members are? The answer was. Well, the board will decide that. Well, who are the members of the board? Well, they'll tell you who they are. So I'm not sure. I'm not very sure who secretive. Is, it sounds is like running the system. <laughs> well, yes, and and all we're all we're asking for, all I'm asking for, is some open communication. Um, tell us how this is happening. Um, I want to make sure that that moving forward, we're able to. Um, continue the level of service to rural cameras, rural Alberta, 
but I mean, I'm, I'm kind of specific because I'm, lo I'm looking after my own backyard, rural cameras and area. Now you you were the chair of the cameras area victim services uh, board uh, until October thirty first. Um, I've got to ask this question. I apologize for throwing it in the middle of uh, our questioning here, but are you the canary in the coal mine here a bit? Are you the only one speaking up? When you spoke to other chairs at those sixty two victim services units. Were they saying the same things to you? And I don't want you to divulge who they were or what was said and who said what, but I just want to make sure that this is not just Ramesh saying these things, but it's an undertone of people across Alberta seeing what changes are coming. And there's some concerns, not just in cameras, but across Alberta. Yes, that's correct. And I would never divulge uh, entirely or divulge who I spoke to, but I have spoke to um, and been in contact with with a few other uh, victim services units, um, and my my understanding uh, from them uh, and they their comments were strictly off the record. Was that they were um, well, I will use the word threatened with termination of their contracts, uh, threatened to have their funding cut off immediately, uh, kicked out the door, and locked out. Um, if they continued in any way to uh, to question or um, whether positively or negatively question the government moving forward. And this in intimidation came out of the, the director of uh, victim services office and still is still going on to this day, is my understanding. Did you ever feel threatened? Um. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I personally applied given my background and um, I, I ran a, a, a large institution with a, a yearly budget of $80 million, um, physically responsible for that. I felt I would be a good candidate and I wanted to see, okay, let's see what, if they're really looking at the right people. So I threw my name into the ring and I was told by uh, persons um, from another victim services unit that my name had come up uh, saying that um, I was a naysayer to this uh, um, change and uh, would not even be considered or looked at. Um, and, and that's why I'm even going further now and saying, I've got nothing. I've got no skin in the game, as they say, to lose. I want to make sure that if this is going through, this has got to go through to look after all of rural Alberta especially the cameras area, um, but all of us in rural Alberta to make sure that we maintain the level of service that we've had. While I was at the Rural Municipalities of Alberta Convention in fall of 2023, uh, the Reeve of Northern Sunrise County, Corina Williams, uh, asked the uh, Deputy Premier and Minister of Public Safety, Mike Ellis, this topic, and this is where it sort of spearheaded for me, um, about the, the proposed changes. And what he had said was, he wants every community to have somewhat of what the victim services units have. So no, no community should feel left out. But in your in our conversation so far, you just alluded to something that I did not know about. And even in our pre-introduction pre-interview that Camrose victim services would help out in would task win from time to time. And that seems like a very big thing in my opinion because that means that you are not just a Camrose victim services unit you're sort of Camrose and region victim services unit is that fair to say yes that uh, a lot of times our program manager would be in with Tasquin assisting court uh victims that are going to court and helping that that was that that was a norm and they were you know if as as example with task would re reach out to us we would uh we would jump in with both feet so yes we did uh we were working together um as a cohesive unit to make sure that our clients were served properly 
And now, did the mandate say that you only had to do cameras or did it give you sort of a gray area that you could do sort of a collaborative approach with some of the surrounding smaller communities that don't touch like Flagstaff County? You would go in and help out people in Flagstaff County or was there a victim services unit there? So well, Flagstaff County had had their own uh, their own unit, but we've helped out even out there. Um, there was uh, a incident out there, and uh, we were asked to to help out, and we jumped in with both feet. And there was no nothing in the in the agreement, the contract we signed with the government that said we couldn't assist other units, and and uh, we more than happily uh, assisted uh, other units that were in you know close proximity to to cameras county so it begs my question if you're already doing a regional approach and i'm playing a little bit of devil's advocate with you here for a second ramesh if you don't mind if you're already at the regional approach can you sort of elaborate on any data or evidence that supports your position against the change? Because it seems like there, there you are a regional, you're a quote unquote regional. Uh, for those who are not watching this, I just air quoted that because I wanted to make sure because you are <laughs> cameras, but you are helping out in the regional area. Can you sort of elaborate on any more data and evidence that supports your positions to say, Province of Alberta, Daniel Smith, Mike Ellis, please don't go ahead with this because it does not work in the long run for our victims in our communities. Well, uh, um, I'm trying to think of any specific uh, specific information or that we have, but um, I think a, it goes back to a big part in the lack of open communication from the government to how this is going to better, better fund or better look after our area. Um, I used, uh, they capped off, sorry, they capped, they, the government of Alberta capped off uh, funding for each victim services unit to 150,000 a year. Uh, as, as a victim services unit in Camrose, we routinely sent money back to the government at year end. Now you look at a at a unit uh, such as Airdrie. Airdrie busted their butts every year to fundraise because that hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I don't think it even lasted them six months. So the government is saying, okay, we've got we've got the funding to move forward to fund this new regional this zonal support this regional design well where was the funding prior to this to say okay you know what Airdrie, you need three hundred thousand a year so we're going to readdress that contract um they talked about uh making sure that the we call the program managers the government is using a new name for these positions um at each each organ, each society, the sixty-three societies, they all decided um, what the salary was going to be. As the holder of the contract, how come the government of Alberta didn't say, "Okay, you know what? The base salary for your program managers has to be X number of dollars moving forward." They could easily have solved the perceived uh, downfalls that they have by stepping up to the plate as the holder of the agreements with all these different uh, societies and say, Here, here's a baseline of salary. Here is how are you going to do business. I'm, we're holding you accountable. Uh, we each had to uh, report every quarter as to what how we're doing, including our financials. Where was the government prior to this to say, to hold, us, to hold our feet to the fire and say, you need to be accountable. You're, you're not spending the money appropriately, or why are you not paying your program manager appropriately? And now they're saying, uh, well, this is what we're going to do now. We're going to move throughout the province, four zones. They're hiring um, four or five um, people to uh, in each zone. Um, 
and I can't see that the I believe the title I'm just looking at my notes here this seal of each zone um, is going to be making decent money so you hire five people each zone to look after that and that, that money is coming out of the victim services fund <coughs> which is supposed to be um, I understand it by law uh, to go to pr uh, providing support for the victims of crime and trauma. Um, I mean, they're getting around it by saying, well, we're building this new zonal model and this is how we're, we're supporting that. Well, prior to this, um, and to this day, I'm not any funding, the uh, all the district, uh, the various boards throughout the province were all run by volunteer boards. Nobody was uh, was paid to uh, to be the chairs and the treasurer and whatnot. I, I want to turn to my last segment here before I have to let you go here, Ramesh. And I, I want to talk about the people. Because at the end of the day, you as victim service units are there to help people. And I, and I say this with right. respect I believe the majority of people do not know what a victim service unit is because they've never had to deal with it. Uh, thank God they don't have to deal with victim services units, yes. but they may have to in the future. What would you want those people to know that we haven't talked about? What would you want the people who are going about their day right now, tuning into the show, maybe a municipal politician who doesn't have a local victim services unit in their area who's going, what is this all about? I, I did not know this existed and I'm so glad I want to learn more. What would you want those municipal leaders, those average Albertans who are listening to this right now? And I say average, I don't mean average. I just mean a, the regular Albertan who's tuning into this right now yeah. to know that we haven't talked about yet that you want to make sure that they, if they take away one thing in this interview, this is what they should take away. Well, I, I think that they need to know that the victims of crime and tragedy, uh, there is support out there for them. Um, and I, that still exists as of today and hopefully will exist moving forward. That um, should you need assistance, um, and, and not even you need assistance, you, when you are a victim of crime or tragedy, um, sometimes you don't even know that you need help. And, um, you know, God forbid that you, you are a client, but it happens. It happens so much. Um, and things that, that, that strike uh, close to home is, um, is domestic violence. My, uh, for my, myself, um, firstly, my, my wife went through her first marriage. And uh, it, it, it's something that's close and dear. And still, I can't understand how that happens, but it happens. But there's support there for those people. There's support there for uh, if you're trauma, you're involved in a serious car accident, whether somebody loses their life or they're hurt, um, you're a witness. Um, all these kind of people are supported. And, and yes, you're entirely right, Chris, that uh, a lot of Albertans, especially in the rural community, don't uh, don't know that they exist because they probably haven't had to use uh, that service. Um, but with the help of the uh, local RCMP detachments, um, they've said, you know, here's, I'm going to give you the number of the victim services or I'm going to have them call you. Um, and only at that time do they, uh, do they know that that service exists. But in the cameras area, for instance, we do uh, we were doing a charity check stop every year, and we had one this year in which uh, it was with the cameras police service, the RCMP, and the, our society together. Uh, we work with uh, the women's shelter and some other areas. Uh, did uh, monetary donations. You could drop off uh, toys, food, whatever you thought fit. Um, so it openly exposed um, the community, especially the rural community, to say, hey, we're out there. We're there to help. If you know of somebody that, uh, that needs help, 
um, has been involved in uh, something to do with either being a victim of crime or, tra or trauma, that we are there to help and we will make sure that uh, the resources are available all the time um, to assist. I, I don't want to say this inappropriately. And I, I, I got, if I do, I apologize to anyone who's listening to this right now. Um, your organization, the victim services units are a godsend. And I say that knowing being someone who's gone through your not the program, but who's gotten help from VSUs. Your dedication, unfortunately, uh, with everything, how it ended is not the way you probably want it to go out, but it is the reality. Um, I, I want, I truly want to say thank you from someone who's accessed your, not your cameras, but who has accessed victim services units in Alberta, thank you so much. It is a godsend, particularly any day of the week, knowing that volunteers will just pick up and just use a call and go out to a scene of an accident, scene of a crime, and yeah. do their best to comfort a family in their most tragic hour. So I appreciate that. I want to leave the last word to you, though, and I want to ask this very poignant question. If these changes do come in, do you feel like the service will still be the same as you're getting today? No, I don't. Not not under the uh, framework that has been presented, and that's been the that's been the issue right from the beginning. Is that uh, myself and some others have been asking pertinent questions. Um, to say, okay, how are you going to handle this? Uh, how is this going to move forward? Um, and uh, I think the the uh, the whole change has been left to uh, the director of victim services, um, and I'm not sure he's open. Well, <laughs> I am sure he's not open to uh, to constructive uh, questions being asked. Uh, we've been stonewalled. And I, as I said before, um, I've got nothing to gain other than to look after and ensure that uh, our clients moving forward, uh, rural Alberta is served uh, properly, professionally, and looked after. And we're not um, thrown to the back burner and said, oh, yeah, we'll look after you at some point. Ramesh, I want to thank you so much. I feel like we've just scratched the surface. This is the first of three episodes in 2024 where we're going to be diving into this conversation. We've started with Ramesh. In two weeks' time, we're going to be talking with uh, some mayors and councillors from across Alberta who are willing to come on and speak openly about these changes that are being proposed by the provincial government and their reaction. And then hopefully by the time those two episodes air, Finally, we will have someone from the province of, uh, of Alberta come on and talk about why they are doing this, because I think that is the key message that we got away from today is with no communication, with nothing going on, we need to be learning a little bit more about this before September 2024 comes around. So Ramesh, thank you so much for starting this conversation with me. I think it was an important one, and I appreciate you taking your time to do this. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate uh, you asking me on board. Thank you so much. If today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all of our latest content, covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations on the cross-border interviews and eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. Now, we are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed and engaged. Now, your support is the backbone of our growth and maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to love. Now, if you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and breadth of our programming. Find our support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.